Thank you for tuning in to the World Builder's Anvil, episode 332. Tell me, what's my motivation? Don't know where to start building your fantasy world? Do you need more? Does it make sense? Forget any worries and become a crafter of imagination. This is the place where we will prime your mind. Now, it's time to heat up the forge, break out the mithril ingots and hammer. Welcome to the World Builder's Anvil. I'm Jeffrey W. Ingram. And I'm Michael Miller. Let's sup from the muck of Java and build. Welcome back. As always, motivationally yours, I am Michael Miller. I've got a small apology for you guys. You just got me today. Uh, Jeff had some family things to take care of today. We were not able to get together to record, so it's probably going to be a little bit shorter. But I'm tackling a subject that I think all of us deal with very frequently as uh, creative individuals is motivation. Um, And I find that uh, motivation and time management uh, tend to be tied together hand in hand. So a lot of what I'm going to be talking about today has to do with both of those things. Um, There was a study done uh, a long time ago that said any new habit takes 60 days. It's actually 66 is what the story Uh, study came up with that it actually takes 66 days of doing a thing every single day to start and really learn and develop a new habit and really I find that completing things and and getting your projects going is really just a matter of creating good habits and sticking to them and it's easier said than done obviously you know it's very easy to say well I'm going to work out every day or I'm going to write every day or I'm going to you know work on learning this instrument that I want to learn every day it's easy to say that it's easy to verbally or even just in your mind commit to that but The irony is that I find that there is a power in writing it down. And I'm not the only one that feels feels this way. There's a a great deal of books and uh, motivational speakers that feel the same way. There's a lot of people that... Are on, this is, is a lot of the things I'm probably going to be saying are things that you've heard before. These are not uh, brand new ideas. As a matter of fact, most of the ones that I'm going to talk about today, none of them are mine. Um, I actually got emailed something recently um, in one of the feeds I followed. Something got uh, I got sent a. It's basically like a journal sort of thing, and it's from a, a group called the School of Man out of uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, and uh, if you want to check them out, it took me a second to actually find where the information came from in doing the search, but me giving you that information, you, sh- you can f- search it down, and they have this really cool journal that's all about, uh, you know, how to organize your day, really, and I thought it was really cool. So I'm not going to go through everything that they had, and I'm also changing terminology. So I've really just broken some of the things down that I thought were really good. And just I thought I'd give you guys a little um, day-to-day thing that you can do. And again, not these ideas are not mine. I, I totally took it out of their book, but I've changed them around a little bit. But also things that you can do weekly and ways to change the way you think about your motivation and what you want to get done. Um, one of the biggest things about that, uh, I, I always go back to, and I'm sure I've, I've talked about this before on the show, is I actually used to um, uh, tutor algebra uh, many years ago. And um, when I sat down with my first student, who was a young man, he was probably, I don't know, 14, 15 years old uh, in high school. And what I did with him the very first time we sat down is I wrote this huge algebra equation. It literally took up half a sheet of paper and, you know, loaded with parentheses and all sorts of different um, ways to, you know, all sorts of different things within the problem. And I looked at him and I said, okay, I want you to solve this. And he was immediately like overwhelmed looking at the problem. He's like, I can't do that. He's like, I have no idea how to do that. I'm like, yes, you do. I'm like, you can do everything in this problem. Like, I I, I don't even know what you do and don't know how to do yet, but I know that you can solve this problem. It's easy. But you're looking at the whole problem. 
and we don't want to do that. We want to look at pieces of the problem. Every single thing you want to do, whether it's write a book, create a game, uh, you know, draw a masterpiece, it's all, all of that can be broken down into smaller, smaller things. And then you just do those smaller things to get to where you need to be, which is complete. So uh, there was a, a motivational video I'd watched a long time ago, and it was, uh, I believe it was a guy who was a Navy SEAL or on special, on one of the special forces teams, and um, he made a big deal out of the first thing that you should do in the morning is make your bed, which I really liked. Uh, and he ex- further explains that when you make your bed first thing in the morning, it gives you a win. It starts your day off with a completed task and a win. You feel a sense of accomplishment, and you you know your bed looks neat. So always make your bed because it starts your day off right. It, it, and doing one thing leads to doing more things. So I like that, and I try to do that myself. My wife and I get up in the morning. We we make the bed together. Or you know this morning she had to go out early, so I made the bed. So I really like that as being the first thing that you do. The second thing that you can do is to be thankful. Have gratitude. Even if the only thing you can do is take a deep breath and be grateful for the air in your lungs. Be grateful that you are still above dirt. Every day above dirt is a good one. So be thankful for things. Be thankful that you can write be thankful that you can draw, be thankful that you play an instrument, be thankful for whatever creative thing you're working on, be thankful that you have pursuits, that you have people in your life that care about you, be thankful that you have things that you don't have that you are looking to get. So just create gratitude, generate gratitude. When you are thankful and gracious and and grateful for the things in your life. That's a big positive. We want to keep your thinking positive. We do not want to feed energy into negative thoughts. You don't want to be negative self-talking. You don't want to be overly critical of your own work and of your own pursuits and of your own thoughts. We want to be positive. We want to be generous with ourselves, with our self-care, our self-thought, with our attitude. Attitude is everything. So, I want you to sit down and I want you to write three big goals that you want to get done this week. Okay? Now, these goals do not have to be huge. They are not huge goals, they're big goals. So, goals could include um, I want to write five pages, uh, I want to work out three days this week, and I want to, you know, I'm married, so you could say, okay, well, I want to set up a surprise date night for my wife. Those would be three big goals, okay? So then what you're going to do is you're going to have little goals that you're going to create for every day. Each one that's each one of these little goals, and we're, again, we're just going with three, okay? We're keeping it simple. And those three little goals are going to be things that feed into your big goals. So if you want to write five pages, maybe what your goal for the day is write one paragraph, I find that if I sit down and commit to one paragraph, odds are I'm going to write a page. So day one, you write write one paragraph. Day two, you write write one paragraph. Day three, you write write one paragraph. Day f- four and five, so we're just talking about a work week. So those five days you write down, I'm going to write down one paragraph. By the end of the week, you should be pretty close to having five pages written because odds are you won't write just one paragraph. But by creating that small goal of I'm just going to write one paragraph, you don't hamstring yourself with that huge algebra problem I was talking about. You don't give yourself a mountain to do. You give yourself an approachable thing to do. You can always commit to more. You can always do more. You know, If you're working on getting back into shape, and you say, okay, well, I'm going to work out for an hour every day. I mean, that can be a big commitment depending on how much time you have. So you say, okay, I'm going to work out for 15 minutes every day. You can work out for longer, or maybe you're starting off really small and you can't even do a push-up. So you just lean against the wall and do a push yourself off the wall sort of thing. Like all of this is small goals, little wins to get yourself to bigger goals and big wins, okay? Okay. So we're, we got our three big goals, and then we've got our three little goals. That are The three little goals are going to be daily. Every day you're going to have three little goals, okay? 
Now, along with that, those three little goals, that gets into assigning your time. If you do not assign your time, it will vanish. If you don't give your time a job, your time will find a different job to do. It's very easy to be like, okay, well, I don't have anything to do today. And oh, like, you know, say say it's Friday and you've got nothing to do Saturday, right? And you're like, okay, well, I've got nothing to do Saturday. Great. I'm going to get stuff done around the house. Well, if you don't sit down, I find with myself specifically, if I don't sit down and I write a list, I'm very big on lists, and I write a list of these are the things that I'm going to do, then I, you know, generally I won't get those things done (laughs) if I don't write them down because I won't think of them. And then I'll wake up Saturday and be like, ah, I don't have anything to do today. Uh, I don't have anything assigned for my time. So I'll sleep late. And and maybe I'll watch some stuff on my phone for a while before I even get out of bed. And, you know, eventually I'll get up and it's like 9, 10 o'clock, half the morning's gone. You know, normally I like to get up 5, 6 o'clock. So then make the bed. (laughs) And if you don't have your time assigned, so not only making a list of the things that you want to do, but also writing down the times you want to get them done assign the time. If you don't assign the time, the time will go to something else. You know, it's the same thing with if you talk to uh, financial people, if you don't assign your dollars a job, your dollars will go, will go to something else. So time is so important that way. It's You have to organize it. You have to tell your time what to do and tell yourself what to do with that time. So um, this is all leading to programming your time and yourself to do the things that you're committed to and, you know, getting them accomplished. And it's also important to know what you're working for and why you exist. And I'm not talking like existentially why you exist, but to commit yourself to something. So for me, I feel that others should benefit from my existence. I should be helping others. It's one of the reasons I do the show is I want you guys to benefit from my failures and my successes. Like anything that I learn in my creative endeavors, anything that Jeff learns in his creative endeavors, we, we love to share with you guys because we want you to succeed as well. So part of my existence is the benef- is to benefit others, to help other people. I love helping other people. I know Jeff does too. So... Uh, another another tough thing to to get about motivation is it, it's really easy to be unmotivated. It's really easy to look at things, turn mountains into molehills. And the irony is once you break it down and and make it smaller into you know much easier to tackle problems, it's still sometimes hard to get motivated about it. And the the short and fast answer is you just got to do the work. And I'm sure you've heard that before. You just have to do the work. Sometimes the work's really small, and we try to make the work as small as possible because getting back to little wins, the more little wins you can line up, the easier things get to keep doing them. And here's another really, really big part of that process. Not only are you going to make your three big goals, you're going to make your three small daily goals. You're going to have your gratitude. And in the morning, you're going to be gracious and think about the, th- you know, be thankful for things. But you're also at the end of your day, you're going to sit down and you're going a lot of small amount of time, literally minutes. And you are going to acknowledge yourself for your little wins. Okay. Give you an example. Yesterday, I hung up a shelf. You know, I, I hung up an eight foot shelf here in my room to uh, store stuff. I actually, this room, actually, the other day, I actually hung two 10 foot shelves, and that's across the room from another shelf I have over my desk. So now I had a whole bookshelf that was taking up floor space in this room, and now it's all off the floor. I have more space in the room, I have everything stored up high so it's out of the way, and it's less cluttered. So that's a big win for me. So I got to acknowledge myself for, hey, good job. You know, you you got rid of this piece of furniture. I put it out front. It's really nice bookcase. Uh, I've had it for years. Really nice wooden bookcase. My wife and I carried it downstairs. We put it out front with a sign that said free. So now someone else gets to benefit from it. We went down to the store and she's like, I'll bet you it's gone before we get back. We were gone for like a half hour. We came back and that thing was gone. So now someone else gets a great new free bookcase. I helped somebody else. And I get a win by cleaning up my office area. So 
Putting up a bookshelf is not a big deal. I mean, I could totally downplay it and be like, you know, what did you accomplish today? You know, you, you screwed some holes in the wall and you hung a bookshelf. Like, that's not a big deal. Anybody could do that. Well, yeah, anyone could do it. But acknowledge yourself for the little wins. Getting back to the positive thought. Getting back to thinking good about yourself and about your accomplishments. Your accomplishments don't have to be Nobel Prizes. You know, it could be, you know what, I did 10 push-ups today. I didn't do 10 push-ups yesterday. And I'm committed to doing 10 tomorrow. And someday, I'll, I'll do 100. But right now, I'm doing 10. So every little thing that you did today, that you wrote down, you committed to, and you did, you acknowledge yourself for that. Give yourself that little pat on the back. You, you, you have to celebrate your wins, no matter how small they are. That, is, that feeds into positive self-thought, and that is so powerful. And I want you guys to get that. So at the end of the, at the, end of the day, you pat yourself on the back for your wins, but you also want to acknowledge your losses. But you don't want to beat yourself up for your losses. If you didn't get the push-ups, if you didn't write the paragraph, if you didn't clean the house or hang the shelf, whatever you didn't do that was one of your goals, acknowledge that you didn't do it, but you're not going to beat yourself up. What you are going to do is look for a lesson. Is there a lesson to be learned? Okay, um, I, didn't, I didn't eat a great breakfast so I was not properly fueled, and I was so fatigued mid-morning that I did not exercise. So tomorrow, I'm going to make sure to eat better first thing in the morning so that <clears throat> when it comes time that I have committed already to work out that morning, that I will be properly fueled and feeling good, and I'll you know, be motivated and, and ready to do the workout that I've committed to doing. Look for the lesson in that little loss, in the thing that you didn't finish, look for the lesson. Don't beat yourself up about it. Acknowledge it. Recommit. Every day is a new day to double down and start again, okay? And also, getting back to gratitude. Your day starts with gratitude. Your day ends with gratitude. At the end of the day, you're going to be, I know I am, <clears throat> filled with thoughts, right? You're reflecting on, you know, what's going on at work, uh, what's going on in the current world situation. There's so much tension in the world today. There's a lot of anxiety out there. A lot of us are worried about a lot of things. So allow yourself that time, okay? Actually, I'm, I'm kind of deviating here. There's two things you're going to do there. One, you're going to write. You're going to do a little journaling. You can put it by the bed or you can sit down at your desk before you head to bed and you're going to empty your brain out. And you're going to do this before, if you're going to be writing every day, I want you to do this before you write too. You're going to have a little journal that's your dump journal. You know, you just pop it open on the laptop or if you you know, want to do it pen and paper, that's great too. I love journaling that way. It's actually my preferred method. Um, and you're going to write about what you're thinking. You know, I'm worried about COVID. I'm worried about social injustice. I'm, I'm worried about my finances. You know, I'm worried about, uh, you know, my father's health or I'm worried about the kids. Like whatever you're worried about, acknowledge it. Give it a second to acknowledge that it's there. Write it down. Get it out of your head. Without acknowledging it, it's just hanging in your brain and eating up space. It is, it is sucking away valuable motivation because it is a distraction to you. If you give a little acknowledgement to it, say, I'm acknowledging that I'm anxious about this thing. I'm acknowledging that I'm worried about this thing. Write it down. Get it out of your brain. Write it down. Type it out. Give it a little credence for a second, all right? But get it out. Then get back to your gratitude. So this is your end of the night. Be gracious about how your day went. You know, be thankful for the people in your life. Be thankful for the work that you did. So positive thought, positive action, and planning. You got to write this stuff down, okay? So you should be writing down your, at the beginning of the week, like so Sunday night, Sunday during the day, whenever. And I'm actually recording this on a Sunday, so I'm going to do this this week. <laughs> write down three big goals. So that could be, uh, like I said, I think what I said earlier was pretty good. Maybe you're going to write five pages on your story. Uh, maybe you're going to do um, however much time or whatever workout goals. Maybe you give yourself some workout goals. And maybe some sort of social goal, like you know, spending time with family or so many hours with the kids or whatever, you know, what have you. And then 
you're going to write out three little things that you can do every day that are working towards those goals. So it could be, you know, write a paragraph every day, do a 15 minute, 30 minute workout every day, um, spend some time with family every day, whatever it is. You know, it could, could, could also be house cleaning. Maybe, maybe you're not great at cleaning the house and you want to get better at that. Okay. So your day's going to start, your Monday is going to start with make the bed, gratitude. If you're going to do some writing that day, start with the journaling, mind dump. Get rid of the the negative thoughts, the anxieties, the worries. Write about the things you're thinking about. Get it out of your brain. Then work on your creative thing. Work with it on it. Work with a clear mind. Then do do whatever your three uh, daily things are. And it's very important to write the times that you are going to do them. I cannot stress enough how important not only writing what you're gonna do but giving it a time allotment in the day. I'm going to do this at 1 to 2 p.m. Now you know what you're going to do. 1 to 2 p.m. comes, you know you're doing that thing. You know, Make sure to put the time limits on it. Because time limits also create, it gives you a deadline. And deadlines are awesome for getting things done. Like That's one of the reasons we create this little schedule. So then at the end of the day, you're, gonna, you're going to go through your wins you're going to go through your losses, and you're going to find a lesson in the losses. You're going to uh, acknowledge yourself for the wins, no matter how little. It could be, hey, I found a matching pair of socks that I, I was looking for. I, I, I had one sock. I love those socks, and I could not find that second sock. I found that second sock today. It's a little win, but acknowledge the little wins. No matter how little, it's all about that positive thinking, okay? And be and have the gra- you know acknowledge the things in your life that you're 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 thankful for have gratitude and then do your mind dump at the end of the day to get rid of those anxieties and and worries before you crawl into bed crawl into that made bed and how nice is it to crawl into your bed when it's made right nice clean made bed well that's cuz you did it the first thing in the morning and i want you to do this for 66 days this is a new habit you do this for a little over two months, and it becomes a habit. You do this, start organizing yourself, start creating that timetable. So the thing that's great about assigning your time and writing down goals and tasks, things that you want to complete, is that can be what forces your motivation. So on those days where you're like, you're not motivated at all, you're like, oh, gosh, I really don't feel like doing this stuff, whatever, well... You've only written yourself down. You're, you're going to do one paragraph today. You can do one paragraph. That's easy. Sit down, write one paragraph. And that usually leads to two paragraphs and more paragraphs. You know what I mean? So always try to follow the schedule. Always try to follow the tasks. Do those things. So your real-world task, This is both, doing this is actually both a real-world and a um, world-builder task. So... Think about what motivates you. Um, write down what you feel your purpose is. You know, and you can just that. That's not like supposed to be an existential exercise. You you don't have to think about why am I here. Create a reason. Like that's up for you to decide. You say like, oh well, you know, my purpose in the world is to, like, one of Jeff's purposes is to help other people bring a million new fictional worlds into being. That's one. That's a goal Jeff's created for himself. That's something he's committed to doing. That's why he does this show. So it can be something like that. It could be like, oh, well, you know, I've got this great idea for a world. I want this world to, to be known by many people. So my, my reason, the thing that what, what I'm here for is to put this world out there. And I think, Michael, I think that it should, no matter what you are committed to in your life, it should include something that services others and benefits others. I mean, don't get me wrong, I certainly have some very selfish pursuits, but I have a lot of ones that I try to remind myself to be humble. Um, it's not something that it comes naturally to me. <laughs> I try to remind myself to be humble and that, you know, my life should benefit others. What I do should help other people. It should not always be about what I want to do in any given moment. So... <laughs> Uh, for a real world task, again, uh, celebrate the wins, um, be 
uh, thankful for the things in your life. And I want you guys to be safe out there. I know there's a lot of things going on. And, uh, you know, avoid the COVID, wear the mask. That's pr- trying to protect others. That's something you can do to service and protect others. Be safe out there and join the closed Facebook group. If you look up Undercroft, you'll find the Fantasy World Builders Undercroft. And uh, you can access Jeff and I there and also a ton of other very cool creative people that are working on projects like the things that you guys are doing. A lot of great information and a lot of really cool people. So thank you all for listening. I'm sure Jeff will be back next week. Uh, Like I said, he had to go out of town for a family thing, and he's literally traveling right now, so we were not able to record together. But I appreciate you being here with me today, and you guys have a fantastic week. Thank you so much for listening to the World Builders Anvil. We would love it if you would share the World Builders Anvil with two of your friends. And so would they. If they are unfamiliar with podcasts, then you get to introduce them to the wonderful world of podcasting. Take them to Stitcher or iTunes, or best of all, just send them to our website, www.gardul.com. That's G-A-R-D-U-L.com. Now strike while the myth was hot. Miller. Miller. Miller.